Hello everyone and welcome back to Feral Tales. If you have been following me for a while, then you might probably know that for a long time I really wanted to recreate Wings Fairies in their Enchantix forms on Monster Heidel basis. But as you were all aware, I was super busy doing commissions for years and I couldn't find neither the time nor the sources to make at least one of them. But uh, luckily one of my amazing Patreons reached out to me and asked me whether they could order one of the fairies and I honestly couldn't be any happier for that opportunity. Which house Layla aka Aisha for this custom and if this video will be well received then I will make the rest of the fairies with the chronological order of who gets their enchantix first. So the next girl will be Stella, then Musa, Flora, Tecna and Bloom of course. And in case if you are a bit confused and you have no idea what Winx Club is or what Enchantix is, well, here is a brief description. Winx Club is an Italian animated series co-produced by Rainbow and later Nickelodeon. It was created by Italian animator Eugenio Straffi. The show is set in a magical universe that is inhabited by fairies, witches and other mythical creatures. The series follows the adventure of a group of girls known as the Winx, students at the Alfia College of Fairies, who transform into fairies to fight villains. The team is made up of Bloom, the Fairy of the Dragon Flame, Stella, Fairy of the Shining Sun and the Moon, Flora, the Fairy of Nature, Tecna, Fairy of Technology, Musa, the Fairy of Music, and Aisha, the Fairy of Waves aka Morphix. Enchantix is a fairy form introduced in season 3. It is the final fairy form in a fairy's formal educational journey to become a full-fledged fairy. In Althea's curriculum, earning Enchantix is considered the final exam. Enchantix fairies who graduate from Althea are also the guardian fairies of their respective home worlds, bound to protect their worlds from evil and destruction. Enchantix fairies wear flowing clothes and barefoot sandals. They have big colorful fairy dust covered wings that have jewels hanging off of them. Their outfits are brightly colored and sometimes intricate. They wear barefoot sandals decorated with jewels that sometimes go up to their calves. Individually, hair may change color and length or glow. Their hair is often decorated, braided, beaded, etc. Fairies often wear a tiara or other elaborate jewelry and either a choker or a matinee necklace that holds a bottle of fairy dust. The form also comes with sparkling long gloves that also reach to the shoulders. In order for a fairy to earn enchantix, she must rescue someone from their home world and show great sacrifice in doing so. Before I get started, as always, please don't forget to subscribe to this channel, like this video if you liked it of course, and comment. I love reading all your comments. With that all being said, let's get started. So as a base for Layla, I chose Clothing Wolf from Monster High. I believe this doll is specifically from the Buyork Buyork line of dolls. I thought that clothing is just a perfect match for Layla, but... Anyhow, I began the usual process of warming up her head with a hair dryer and then I disconnected it from her neck. Then I cut out all her hair. Then I removed all the hair plugs with tweezers. Not sure why, but it was a bit difficult removing the chunks of hair off of her head, so in this process I cut out her werewolf ears and then I removed the hair from those holes instead. And then I removed her factory paint with pure acetone. I'm not gonna go very detailed with this cause I did the same thing in my reverie video but basically to cover up her ear holes I stick some paper tape over them. Then I drew the spots 
removed it, then placed the tape over some Warbla Cobra Cast thermoplastics, cut it out, and then I warmed it up and stick to the holes. Then I began making her wig cap. As always, I used tool and tacky glue, left it dry for a while, and then I removed it from her head. I cut it out according to her hairline, and then I removed the leftover kitchen wrap. Now obviously I couldn't leave Layla without any pair of ears, so I had this leftover Hunter Huntsman's ears in my stock, so I gave this to her. I once again used some Warbler Cobra Cast thermoplastics to stick them in place. I warmed it up with camera and then I glued them in place. I also used tweezers and an X-Acto knife to sort of blend it with her skin. Now I really tried my best to color match it, but I don't know, it didn't look good at the end. First of all, Warblast texture wasn't really smooth even after I sanded it, but like I wish I had one of these Dremel tools to do that and the color was kind of mismatched, but anyways, I still rolled with it. Once I was done with all that, I began the repainting. I began by sketching the shape of her eyes. And then I used my Caran Dash Super Colored to Soft White Pencil to paint her scleras. But then I realized that it didn't look very smooth, so I did this once again with white acrylic paint. Then I blushed her upper eyelid, then her eyebrows. I really wanted her to have a more fierce and sort of courageous facial expression, kind of showing more attitude in a way, which I thought that would match perfectly with Layla's personality. I also highlight it around her tear duct area. And then I measured the distance between her eyes and eyebrows to make sure that everything is even in this stage. And then I kept reshaping her eyebrows until I was happy with them. And then I added more highlights under her lower eyelid and nose bridge. She was wearing a light pink lipstick, so I painted that with acrylic paint. Now in this stage, I was already super unsure about the base layer that I have painted. And sometimes when stuff like this happens, I have this voice in my head that tells me that this isn't going to work. And then at first I try denying that until it gets louder and louder, until I really started to hate the lipstick that I've painted, and I also hated the eye shape. The eye shape wasn't really giving wings, and the lipstick looked like one of these neon lipsticks from 2010s or something. So I made the decision to erase this, and then I began everything all over again. This time I made sure that the eye shape I drew matches with the Winx art style, then I began building up all the layers on this new base. I also painted her upper and lower eyelids. And then to make sure that the eye shape is fine looking, I also began painting her irises. And then I used a lot of lighter pastels to make her lips pinker, cause there is no way I was using acrylic paint on her lips this time. Then off camera I painted her scleras with acrylic paint and I also drew her right iris. Then I defined all the lines to make them sharper. And I also drew her left iris of camera. Then 
I also painted some highlights on her upper eyelid. Then I added more blush to her forehead and cheeks. And then I also added some shadows to her nose. Then I also blushed her lips. And then the tear duct. Then I blushed some shadows at the bottom of her upper eyelid. Before I paint her pupils, I actually painted the spots blue so that they will sort of show up under them. And then I also painted the lower highlights of her irises. And then I finally began painting the pupils black. And then I also made sure to really nicely blend it with the scleras using blue pencils. And this is how they looked. And after that I drew her black eyeliner. Now she was wearing some yellow eyeshadow, which I applied some of, of course, but then I thought maybe I could add, I guess, more modern looking yellow eyeliner instead, so I painted that with acrylic paint. And as I was done with that and ready to paint her eyelashes, I actually decided to blush her lips instead and do the texture so that I will seal this layer with MSC and then begin drawing the eyelashes. Because if I did this without sealing, I had a feeling that the yellow eyeliner might peel off while I would try painting the lashes. Oh, and I also drew her eyebrows as well before doing that. And finally, once I sealed that layer, I began drawing her eyelashes. Personally, I really love this step. I feel like this is when the doll's beauty finally starts to show up, so I took my time doing this. And then I did some final blushing to finish this up. Off camera I painted the catch lights of her eyes and then I painted the middle part of her lower eyelid white with acrylic paint. Then I added more shadows to the bottom of her upper eyelid.
and then I took some Perlex powders and applied them to her eyebrow bone. And then I also added some to her forehead, cheeks and chin. And the face up was finally done. Then I quickly began sending her body to remove the glossy texture of it so that the blushing will stick to its surface. And then I did the final blushing and I also added some Perlex powders on top of it. Now Leila's hair is too toned as well so I had to dye some alpaca hair ginger shade first. So I used some professional hair dye for that and I believe that I actually purchased this hair dye originally expired. It said on the packaging that it expired in 2018 but I don't know, it did its job so that's all that matters at the end I guess. So I mixed the dyes and then I applied that to alpaca hair. Now I already had some brown alpaca hair and the shape didn't really match with Leila's hair color so I decided to dye it using fuchsia, a uh, free dye. And it dyed into this shade that's sort of between burgundy and brown. I don't know, it was just the perfect match in my opinion. So after hair dyeing I began making the wefts for her wig using tacky glue. And once the tacky glue dried, I peeled the wefts off. And then I began applying them to her wig cap. And then I also sticked her pigtails. And for the hairline from her forehead, I actually glued wefts inside the wig cap so that the edges of the wig cap won't be visible. And then I glued wefts to create her hair part line. Also to completely hide her hair part line, I added another layer of wefts, this time from the outside of the wig cap edge. And I feel like some of you are going to hate me for this drastic cut, but my camera battery died in this stage and I couldn't wait for it to charge so I gathered all the wefts of camera, but I mean, if you go back, you can still sort of figure out how I did this. I just flipped all the wefts and then I tied them with the pigtails. And then it was time to do all these braids that you see in the reference photos. So I made wefts off of her ginger hair as well, then I cut them into these thin sections and I glued them from the inside of the wig cap. Once they fully dried, I did the braids, and this was actually the first time that I did braids with two sections of hair, cause usually I do them in three sections, but I don't know, I kinda like this method way better. I mean, it's faster and the braids end up looking way longer. So I finished doing this and then I glued her baby hairs as well. And this is how the wig looked in this stage. And these are all the braids that I did. And then it was time to also match the hair texture of Layla. So I used regular hair iron first to detangle and straighten her hair.
and then I used my girlfriend tool to give her hair some noodly or curly texture. And I also used some hairspray in the process so that they will be fixed in place. And this is how it looked at the end. Then to keep her ginger braids in place, I stitched them to the wig. Now when I tried the wig on her head, it looked good, but the hairline on her forehead, it just looked way too drastic, you know what I mean? It's sort of like needed to blend with her forehead, so I did some separate braids and glued them from the inside of the wig cap. And I also decorated them with this mini caviar beads for extra detail. And then I thought that her pigtails definitely needed more ginger braids, so I gave them some extra extensions. Then to imitate hair elastics, I glued these purple threads and I also decorated them with these rainstones. Then I remembered that in Layla's base fairy form, she had some rings going on in her outfit, so I thought that maybe I should bring them back and decorate some of her braids with them, so I did that as well. And I also decorated some of her pigtail braids with emerald green beads of camera. And once I was done with her wig, I began working on her outfit. And once again, when I was in the city, I forgot to buy some paper tape and I was so mad at myself because I hate taking the body shape using matte class paper, but I mean, what could I possibly do in this stage? I couldn't waste four hours to go and buy some, so I used this crappy method instead. So I cut out the paper shreds and then I wrapped her body in a kitchen wrap and I began taping the shreds on. Then I marked the crop top and cut out all the axes. And then I removed it from the body. Then I also marked the shape of her mini skirt and I cut it out as well. And if you might be wondering why you hate doing this with paper, well, mostly because of this. You can't mark over it with pencils, so the only option is to use a pen with an ink. And the ink gets all over my fingers and it's just really difficult to remove it at the end. But anyways, I traced all the pattern pieces on thicker paper and I cut them out of camera. She also got these three triangle shapes on her crop top, so I drew them as well. Now to make the outfit, I went for fabric shopping again. I bought the fabrics, but I was having a really difficult time trying to find a matching green silky satiny fabric. And I bought this shade of green instead, and you know when you purchase something and you immediately regret it? I like awkwardly took the fabrics and then went to a different fabric shop. And this is the shade of green fabric that I found, but it, was quite, it wasn't quite the shape that I was looking for, but at least this one, with this one I could dye it to match. So I bought it and then I came back home and I dyed the fabrics on a stove using Kelly Green with dye. And after it fully dyed, this is the shade that I ended up with and it was just perfect, so I was really happy with it. So I traced all these pattern pieces on this fabric and cut them out and fray checked them. Now, of course, since these are supposed to be fairy outfits, they couldn't be so plain textured, so I also bought some green and purple tulle. 
and I put a layer over this so that it will look touch more magical looking. Also the tool that I have been using, it had like this sparkly glittery particles in them so it was just ideal. So I attached this over the fabric pieces using paper glue and then I cut out the access tool. Oh and I forgot to tell I used two layers of this silky satiny fabric with a tool layer over it. Now there are two versions of Layla's Enchantix outfits, for some reason when she first transforms her fairy outfit is mostly in bitterish tones, but then after a few episodes it turns green. And since she was originally wearing green in her Magic Wings outfit, I decided to make the green version of it. Also we already have someone else wearing blue so everyone definitely needed to have their signature colour. But anyways. I began working on her crop top by stitching the side gap triangles to make pattern pieces fit on her chest area. And then I also hand stitched the back pattern pieces to the front piece. And then I hemmed the top and bottom edges. And then it was time to attach this triangle shape to the crop top, so I cut them out of this purple fabric, used some paper glue to hem the edges, and then I stitched them in place. Also again with these triangles, in one version they are green and in other versions they are purple, so I decided to make them purple and leave the crop top green. And then I cut out this, I don't know what to call this, this leaf shaped pieces, attached some tool over them and at this point I realized that I forgot to add tool to the purple triangle pieces so I had to do this all over again so I did them off camera. Now Leila's skirt had this purple slice in it so I drew that on her pattern piece. And then I traced that on fabric, cut it out. Frey checked it off camera, added the purple tool over it and hemmed the edges and stitched that on her skirt piece. Then for the back pieces to fit her butt area, I mindlessly stitched the triangle gaps to create the curved shape without realizing that I forgot to attach the purple slice things to the back edges as well. So I took my seam reaper and ripped the stitches and began making the purple slice thingies. This time it consisted of multiple pieces so I cut them out, attached two over them, then I hemmed the edges and stitched to the back skirt pieces. And then I finally closed the back triangle gaps. And then I hand stitched all these pieces together. And this is how it looked. And it was time to hem the top and bottom edges of the skirt. So I took my time hand stitching it. Then I cut out all these leaf pieces out of fabric, fray checked their edges of camera and glued tool over them. And I stitched them to her skirt. But for now let's go back to her crop top again. 
so I cut out these leaves for her crop top and of course they couldn't stay so plain so I glued tons of caviar mini beads over them for extra detail. And I also glued these slightly bigger green beads. Then I also glued these emerald green rainstones and then I used some metallic threads to stitch the leaves to the crop top because they were just glued on this stage. In the end I also added some transparent snap closures. Then I also decorated the leaves on her skirt with the same exact caviar mini beads. And then I glued them in place and this is how they looked. And then I used some extra metallic thread to stitch them to the skirt. Then I also glued some rainstones at the bottom edge of the skirt and at the top of each leaf. Then I stitched this blue thread shoelaces to the purple slice of the skirt. And I also stitched these blue beads to their edges for extra detail. Then I added more of these crystals at the top edge of her skirt. And then I put her crop top on and as you can see I stitched some of these blue threads to it. And then I also added some mini beads both to her crop top and skirt top and bottom edges. And the fairy outfit was finally done. Then it was time to make her tiara. I took some of that blue thread and then I put some wire inside it so that I will be able to shape it. And then I attached this rainstone to it. And I began stitching beads over it. And once I was done with the beads, I also glued some rainstones to it. And this is how it looked at the end. Now I forgot to tell you that I also switched clothing wolf's werewolf hands to regular monster high hands and then I painted gloves over them. Also in some reference photos the gloves are yellow and in some other ones they are purple so for some reason I went with gold and yellow gloves. And I believe I painted three layers and I sealed them in between layers so that no paint will chip off. Then in the end I blushed them with Perlex powders and protected it with a final layer of MSC. Then for the fairy sandals I glued and rolled her feet in these green threads and I also glued some rainstones to them. Then it was finally time to make the wings. I found this template on the internet and I printed it out. By the way, this is the username of the person who made these templates, so I thought that I should give them some credit, so go follow them, I guess. 
But anyways, I cut out the wings, then I decided to also separate the pointy, heart-shaped part from the base as well. And then if you might be wondering, what are you going to make them out of? Well, I'm going to use Angelina film as always. I mean, if you are into Pinterest and fairy core aesthetic, then you probably came across to this realistic looking fairy wings. The, I believe that most of them are made out of Angelina films. So, but anyways, I cut out all the pieces. And then to make the corpus of the wings, I'm using this golden wire. I shape them according to the wings and then I glued them together using this specific super glue that comes with a fixation spray. Once I was done with the corpus, this is how it looked. And it was time to insert them into the Angelina film. The film basically needs to cover the wire from two sides, so that once it's ironed, it will permanently stick to it. So I inserted all the pieces in and it was finally time to iron them in place. Sorry if the lighting is awful, to be honest I wasn't even planning to record the ironing part. But basically I placed them on the ironing board, then I covered them with some cotton fabric and I ironed them down. And please make sure to cover the wings with cotton fabric to iron them, cause if you use the iron directly it will basically burn the wings. So I ironed all these pieces and then it was time to cut out the access pieces. However, I'm not going to fully cut them. I will just make them more even and thinner looking cause I still have to burn these edges. And then I very carefully burned them with a candle, trying my best not to overburn the film. Then as I was done with the burning part, I glued all these pieces together. Then I also decorated the wings with rainstones. And then in here, as I was trying to organize them, I think I lost it already. But anyways, the wings also had these lines, so to imitate them, I also glued these mini green beads.
And at the bottom part of the wings I also glued these golden beads for extra detail. Then I thought that maybe I should also add these mini sparkles to them. I mean, they are star shaped and some of you might think that they don't really match with Layla's symbol. I mean, stars are more of, you know, sterilized thing, but take them more as a, as like a part of glitter or sparkles. I mean, they are not that big to be taken as stars, you know. And she also had these beads hanging off of her wings, so I made that as well, and I also stitched them in place. Now this was the end of the project and I really just wanted to call it a day and finish her up, so I just wanted to make a very mediocre looking fairy dust, so... I did whatever I'm doing right now, but but then I thought that I put a lot of effort into this, then why am I giving up on this at the end? So I took my time, so I took my time making the fairy dust as well. So I made the stone bottle thingy out of polymer clay, and then I could not believe that I baked this tiny thing in the oven for 30 minutes, and then I took it out sticked it on a paper tape and then I painted it with acrylic paint. Then I took this metallic ring and I glued some mini caviar beads to it and I attached the bottle stone to the ring of camera. In the end I glued the iconic stones near her tear duct and I also glued a rainstone to her belly button. And the doll was finally done. Thank you so much for watching guys, I really hope that you loved the end result whether you are a fan of the franchise or someone who was unfamiliar with the fairies. I mean doing this definitely meant a lot to me, I honestly cannot believe that I have finally made one of them cause I have been planning this for years and if you really would want me to make the rest of the fairies then please please it's extremely important don't forget to like this video and subscribe to this channel and try to be active in the comment section and share this video with your friends or someone who you know that might be a fan of the franchise so that i will be able to afford making the rest of the girls also shout out to my amazing patreons that made this video possible huge thanks to smoogish cordula seagull awkward burp purple pixie flying bachelors angela reed sk anna drastova and shannon mcclintock and if you would like to support this series, then I have a special tier on Patreon called Fairy Dust, and it is only $2 a month, and you will get early access and sneak peeks as well as shoutouts in my upcoming videos. And once again, thank you so much for watching, and now enjoy the end result pictures, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.